if you don't mind, open up your Bibles, or I think we have scripture up on the screen there, Romans chapter 1, and I'm going to read in verse 16 and 17, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to share some thoughts about this, um, about God's love, our need for salvation, um, not only uh, initially when we get saved, but that we continue to need His salvation, and that we're going to have that uh, complete when we seek Him. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 17 says this, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jews and then for the Gentiles. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Father, um, I just thank you again for the privilege of teaching this morning your word, and I pray, God, that you would just allow your words to be spoken to change our lives and increase our faith in you. Father, change whatever you need to do today in our hearts. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this, this, uh, this scripture, I think, is just, it's one of those things that you have read, maybe memorized in years past, but then it's like, oh, let's come back to this again and, and realize what it means. So I want to talk about salvation today. I mean, most of us here today, I could say, we've probably been saved, right? I had a moment where, as we, the song was, oh, God called out my name, I heard it, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, and I said, oh, I need something more than myself. I always share my story. Um, it's good to tell our story when um, there's God's story and then there's our story and God wants us to be part of his story, right? We're all together. And so when I got saved, I was in, I, most of you know, I was in the brig at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and I heard God call my name. Amen. And I, was, I grew up as a good Catholic boy. I was an altar boy. I, I, was, I grew up religious. Grandma took us to church. Mom and Dad did. And so we went to church. It was at one of those uh, churches that had the pews in it. It was like real hard wood, 19 or whatever. It was just, anyway, and it was, you know, very uncomfortable when Grandma kept us in line as six kids. So it was, uh, I don't know how she did it, but it was, it was amazing. But even in that experience, I had a, a hunger for God, a hunger to know God, but I didn't know God. And then when I got in trouble, you know, I don't know what it was. I couldn't, you know, I was like, hell, you know? And God said, hey, here I am. And when I did that, I remember that day exactly. It was, uh, I had uh, been in the break for just a couple weeks, only a week, and I was on a, uh, what they call a working party in, in the military. You could go clean other people's stuff up, so I was, I was doing that. And the truck I was had gotten an accident, and I heard, heard my other phone, this phone. And uh, so I was on kind of light duty. I couldn't go out. I could, all I could do is sit on my little military cot in, in, my, in the brig and read. They said I could work on the military gear, like shine my boots or whatever, or I could read a Bible. That was the only two options you had. Of course, I was rebellious, so I didn't want to work on my military gear. No rebellion people here, right? <laughs> So I said, okay, I'll read my Bible. And Tina had put her Bible in my bag when I, she got my stuff to go into the room. So I had her Bible that her grandmother gave her. Grandma, uh, right, grandma and grandpa. Um, and so I just started reading in Genesis and Exodus and, uh, you know, got to uh, all that stuff, read about God. It was like, it was exciting. I was like, this is all new to me. But that day when I got in uh, that accident, the next couple days, I was able to go from sitting on that cot, reading the Word of God, and then going to the, 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 uh, the corporal that was in charge of the, the, my dorm and the brig, uh, let me go up to the library that day. For whatever reason, I got a little favor, and I went up there and I was reading. You know, that moment that when God called my name, the moment I accepted the Word of God, um, it was like I was in this bubble. It was me and God. I know now it's the Holy Spirit's presence, right? I didn't know all this stuff that I know now, which is that something happened. My heart began to change, and I knew I needed God. My, this, this was my thought at the moment. I was wretched. I was a sinner. I didn't know what that was till that moment. I knew I was, I was guilty of all the things I've done. I was only 19, 20 years old, so I was thinking about, you know, the Lord 
show me in my mind's eye, like all my sins from that moment when I knew what was right from wrong. I don't know what the age that was. I just knew. And all of the present, all the things that I did wrong, it was like, it was like uh, I know now it was just kind of a vision, but it was like a little movie, you know, in my mind's eye. I could just see all these things. And I, I was married to Tina. We got married when we were 18. I thought, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to divorce her because that's my thought. Because I was unclean. I was no good. I was going to give her a chance to go meet some nice guy and have a happy life because I was just a dirt ball, right? Not, did anybody ever feel like that before, right? At that moment, at that moment, God was just giving this all to me, downloading all this stuff and showing me who I really was and that I needed a Savior. I didn't know I needed Jesus, but I just cried out, God, forgive me. So what happened as I repented of my sins then, right? God, forgive me. And he did. It was like, in that instant, it was like a whiteboard. It was just clean. Well, it was a chalkboard in my mind. And it was just white clean. <laughs> the whiteboard, yeah, whiteboard had come out yet, you know. So it was just a chalkboard, but it was just white clean. Actually, it was white. It really was white. My sins were on, and it was just clean. So maybe it was a future whiteboard. Yeah. It was a vision of the future. <laughs> just gone. Because even a chalkboard, you can still see those things on the chalkboard, right? But it wasn't like a chalkboard because it was just white clean. There was nothing there. So at that moment, for the first time in my life, I felt, like, clean. I didn't feel guilty. I didn't feel like there was something, you know, I had to prove anything. At that moment, I just felt clean. I remember taking a deep breath and thinking, wow, that was even clean air. That was, you know what I'm saying? I didn't and then when I was out of the brig and three days later, I got to walk outside and see the, the trees and the grass and the clouds and the sky. It was like everything was new. It was like this was... I was seeing it through a different vision, different different eyes. It was just, everything was new. Amen? I was ready to make things right with Tina, which we didn't have anything wrong, which is that, you know, I just felt like it was a dirt ball, she didn't need me, right? So, uh, um, anyway, uh, because of that, because of that experience, I had this revelation. So, everybody needs salvation, right? We all need salvation. It's a free gift from God. Do you have to earn salvation? No. Do you have to be in the break to get salvation? No, but everybody, salvation is for all of us, amen? And we, when we're preaching the gospel, we're sharing with our friends, that's what we want to give them, that opportunity to know Jesus, right? To know the love of the Father. Know that for that you, you can be forgiven from everything that's ever happened to you, man. That's, that's the, the, the salvation that we, we want. We, we're leading them not to, and I, I, I like to share this often, but we're not leading them to Capital City Church, right? Like, don't, I tell people recently, in the last six to eight months. Don't want to invite people to the church. Invite them to your house. Right? Invite them to, uh, you know, have break bread with you. Have, go play volleyball. Go play ultimate frisbee or whatever. Just make friends with people. Amen? And be there for them. And then, you know, eventually they'll come to church. So they'll say, well, that pastor, that's not really pro girl, church girl stuff. I know. Because we're not growing in Capital City Church. We're growing in Kingdom of God. Right? And so, at your workplace or wherever you meet people, I mean, it's a place and opportunity to share the salvation of God. What are we sharing? What is the gospel? Good question for you today. We'll start on this side. And we'll go this way. Okay, so what is the gospel? Don't call on me, right? I won't call on you. Just raise your hand. You want to share? What is the gospel? Just a minute. God's word as it pertains to your life. God's word as it pertains to your life. Okay, good. What is the gospel? The good news. The good news. And what is the good news? That Jesus Christ died for our sins and we have life and hope. Right? What else? I like that song, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus Loves Me, right? He's for me, he's not against me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have what? Eternal life or everlasting life. That's the gospel. Gee, God loved us. He knew we were sinners. If we believe that Jesus uh, died for us, then we can be saved, right? That's the gospel. So what do we share with people? We share that with them. They can't argue with that. How do you know that? How do you know that that happened? This, we just read it. How do you know that it happened? How do you, how do you, how do you believe that? Huh? Say, it, say it louder. It's by faith. It's by faith. It's by faith that we believe what I, the story I told you about myself, is by faith. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior by faith. Amen. 
He didn't come into my cell. He didn't show up anything. Nobody, you know, I didn't see writing on the wall. It's by faith. I believe whatever, maybe even the Catholic Church, whatever I heard in, you know, from other people, that word came in me. It became alive in me, right? And all of a sudden I believe. It was by faith I believe, right? Because it doesn't say how salvation says, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. What is the power of God? It's, it's the gospel. The gospel is what? Again, what is the gospel? Well, you know why I say this? Because people sit in church for years and years and years, and they never know what the gospel is. They read, they say, oh yeah, it's the gospel. What is the gospel? It's that Jesus Christ dies, and he suffered, and he rose again on the third day, and he's resurrected, sitting at the right hand of the power. That's the power that we need today. We need his death, we need his burial, and we need his resurrection to give us power. Because when, this is really cool, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but you know what's really cool about the resurrection? Jesus had to leave this earth to go to heaven so he could send the Holy Spirit. Because he said, I'm not going to leave you alone, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, I'm going to empower you so you can preach this gospel. Amen. Amen. So you can walk this life out by faith. I'm going to give you a helper, a paraclete. I'm just going to come alongside you, attach himself to you, be in you. Matter of fact, you don't have to come to the temple to worship anymore. You are the temple of God. Amen. How powerful is that? Well, I don't need church. Well, that's not true. We do need church. We need a fellowship with each other. We need encouragement. We need that. Don't get me wrong. But we don't, you know, but we got to realize that when we're at work or we're in our everyday life or whatever we're doing, the, you are part, you're carrying God with you. The power of that salvation is in you. Amen. Come on. Amen. You're carrying life, and you're going to give that life away. And the more you give away, the more God just floods into your life. Amen. Like Joe was sharing, I'm sharing that work that I, I just can't wait. To, I just love to get a secular job so I can do that. That's why I love driving Uber. I, the only reason I drive Uber is so I can share Jesus with people. It is so much fun. They're, well, they're trapped in my car for once. I think it's really kind of cool. <laughs> But it's just like, who's the next person that comes to my car guy that you want me to talk to? You know, and I just, I don't talk to everybody. I want the Holy Spirit to tell me, this, this person or that person. And, and you know, my heart is broken sometimes because I see people, you know, uh, you know, in their sin. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you don't have to be like that girl, you know. But there's another life that you have that's better than what you have. But anyway, my heart is broken for them because I want to share Jesus with them. I just wait for the Holy Spirit to give me the okay. And it's the same thing at work, right? You know, you, you know, let's be a light for Jesus, right? So you're solid in your faith. You know what you believe in. You understand it. And then people come to you and you just, wow, they just come because they're looking for, they have no hope in the world. There's no life in the world. It's work, 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 work. They never have enough money. They're never, never satisfied. Even with the riches of people, they never satisfy. They always want more, right? And we can be content with what we have, right? Because our hope is in Jesus. We are saved from the things of the world, right? And now we don't have to have we don't have to think like the world. Come on, is this Christ good or not? You know what it is, right? Hey, if you have a oh, we have we have never had a new new car for since we had a Chevy Chevette, right? No, we had a Dodge Lancer. Yeah. Yeah. We had a Dodson 200 XS. That was a thing. I got promoted in the Marine Corps and I got a bonus, so we got a brand new car. Um, but we haven't had one since. And it doesn't really matter to us anymore, right? Because our hope is in the future. God, not in what we have in this world, right? Be content. Anyway, I didn't, that, was a, that was a bonus. That was free anyway. Um, so anyway, so we have, we have salvation because Jesus provided us salvation for, the, uh, for, our, for our past, right? Everything that we did wrong in the past, Jesus provided salvation for us. And he also provided uh, a, a way to pay the penalty for that sin, right? So we don't have to. And we need to believe in him, right? So we are saved, right? You're saved and I'm saved. And now in the present, we have present salvation, right? We have power now over sin because of the Holy Spirit in us, amen? So we have this power. We are being saved right now, right? Are we being saved? So, well, I was saved then. I gave my life to Jesus, so I'm saved from my penalty of sin. And now we're being saved. How many feel like, that's this part I want to talk about today a little bit more. We, we're, we're being saved from our sin. So sin tempts us, right? Uh, we've been tempted. Right? Sin and comes to entrap us. Come on, believers, right? But we have power over that sin. Say amen. Amen. Come on. We have power over the present sin that we deal with every day, or attacks us, that comes after us, or tempts us. 
That's the power we need to walk in because we have the Spirit of God in us that tells us and reveals us, you're about to do something wrong. Come on, is that only me? You know what I'm saying? We're about to say something or have a bad attitude or, or, or uh, an opportunity comes that's not a righteous opportunity. Uh, you know, you can fall into that, you know, because, you know, it's a good, you know, it's a good deal right here, right? This is a good, this, this is maybe getting some extra money or whatever, but it's, it's not a righteous thing and you know it instantly, right? And then you battle within your mind and your heart, should I yield to that or not yield to that? That's, but, but we have power over that sin. So we have the default, if you will, your default answer is, no, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's righteous. I'm going to do the right thing. We, we battle with that, right? We battle with trying to do the right thing. But we have power over that through Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have power over that because not only through Jesus, because he made, had gave us victory over sin, but we have power over that now also because we have the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. And we anything that comes at us, any temptation, any doubt, any fear that comes our way, we can say no in the name of Jesus. And sometimes that's why we need each other to help us with that, right? Because the battle is real. Is it not? The battle is real. We battle with it. Young people battle with it. Old people battle with it. All Christians, anybody that claims to be a Christian battles with that. Amen? And we battle that because we had that experience of salvation and the enemy, the devil, let's talk about that for a minute, doesn't like what happened to you. And he's gonna, always going to accuse you. He's always going to attack you. He's always going to uh, try to uh, make you stumble. That's what his job is. But we have victory. Come on. Over the enemy and all the demon forces in the world. Come on, saints. Not because of our righteousness, right? It's because of what he did for us. So we're humbled to that. So, no, I got this. I got this. I listen to some of those. those uh, you ever listen to uh, preachers on TV? I'm serious. I just want to pee, guys. It just makes me sick, you know? Because it's in their power. When they come across, anyway, when they come, I mean, if I got to know them personally, it'd be different. But when they come across on TV, it's like everything they can do, it's not really giving to God. I can't do this life. I can't do what I do, only but through Jesus Christ. Amen? So we need His power. We, we are continuous being saved. We call it in the church where, we got, where the first salvation that we call is justification. We're justified through faith in Jesus. And the second part, we call it uh, sanctification. We're being saved. We're being, we're working through our salvation with fear and trembling, right? Let's look at, um, yeah, let's look at Ephesians. I just changed my notes around here. Let's, at, look at, let's go to the book of Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. I mean, I'm sorry, Philippians 2. Philippians 2, I'm sorry, yeah. I had Ephesians on my mind for the wedding, but um, Ephesians, Philippians 2, and I want, um, we're going to start, we're going to read this whole passage together, and, or I'm not together, but I'm going to read it to you, because I like to show, sometimes when I preach, I just do one, I do one little scripture verse, you know, and this is the whole section to get us to the point where I really want to show you where we need to work out our, our, our uh, Salvation with fear and trembling, but you got to read the whole thing. So, so, first one says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if you have any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with His Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like minded, making the same love, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition and vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Come on, say amen. Hallelujah. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. Now, how do we know that's just the opposite of America? Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. Look out for yourself. Get, get, do, do. It's hard to look out for the interests of others. But we need to because we want to share God's love with them. Your attitude should be the same of that of Christ Jesus. Can you say amen to that? So our attitude should be like Jesus. How many want to be like Jesus? Right? I'm not Jesus like Tina Shear. I'm not Jesus. All right, I can't be Jesus, but I can have an attitude like Jesus. I can act like Jesus. I can love like Jesus. I can touch people like Jesus. I can pray like Jesus prayed, amen? But I'm not Jesus for them. I'm not going to give them salvation. They have to. Capital City Church is not Jesus. So coming to Capital City Church isn't going to punch your ticket to heaven, right? You need to know Jesus. So here you go. Your attitude should be like Christ Jesus, 
who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider some equal with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found, formed in, in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death unto the cross. Oh, be like Jesus, have the attitude like Jesus, be humble like Jesus, and even unto death. That's what it says, right? Therefore God exalted him to the right place, highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at that name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we're teaching, Jesus did all these things. He humbled himself, he exalted Jesus, God the Father he exalted him. We're going to focus people towards Jesus, when people to fall in love with Jesus, right? Because when we do, then it glorifies the Father. It glorifies Father God. Daddy, we gather, and there's going to be a great celebration happening. Father God's going to be there. We're going to go praise Him. Amen. It's going to be an awesome time. But look at the next, look, verse 12. It says, therefore, because of all these things, it says, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, Paul speaking to the church, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, to will and to act according to his good purpose. Uh, verse 14, let's go on. Do everything without complaining and arguing. I just want to say that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so that you may uh, become blameless as pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation. Are we in a crooked and depraved generation? Yeah. Come on. I, I mean, I could see preachers 100 years ago saying the same thing, and I could say, wow, we're even closer now, right? This place is ridiculous. I mean, sin, sin is... I mean, good is bad, and bad is good if we're not there. I don't know what, if it gets any worse, it's going to be crazy. Amen? And I'm not looking at just America either. I'm looking across the world, right? It's just crazy across the world. In which you shine like stars in the universe, as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the, sac on the sacrifice and serve Coming from your faith, I give glad. I excuse me. I am glad and rejoice with all of you, so that you should be glad and rejoice with me. What is, it, what is Paul saying? Listen, he poured. He poured himself out. He gave to the church. He taught them about the things of Christ. He taught them the truth, and then he says, "We're going to rejoice at the end. We're going to rejoice. There's going to be a time of rejoicing. It's not easy." So the point I want to make, and this is verse twelve. It says, therefore, my dear children, as you have already always obeyed, not only in my presence, but also in my absence. So, you know, I mean, how would you like to take Pastor Bob and Pastor Tina home with you and then we can help you work out everything and be perfect, right? And be like, well, Jesus and God, the Holy Spirit is already there with you, so we don't have to do that. But it says, the second part, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. So this is kind of interesting because we're working on our salvation with fear and trouble. So we have to fear God? Well, you know, I think we have a loss of the fear of God in this world now. There's nothing wrong with fearing God. Have a fear, a righteous fear of God. I mean, He can take your life, or He gives it, and He can take it away, right? I think about that. So I have a righteous fear of God, and I think that's what happened in the world, in the Christian community, especially if we just don't have this fear. We're kind of going through this religious activity and not really loving and fearing God, because when we do, our hearts change towards one another, towards our wives, our children, right, to our loved ones, and also to our neighbors. I mean, we have a. That's what's funny. We have this house that's going to be empty next to us. Uh, Dwayne, the person I had told you about that I did her his funeral. Um, of course, the land, the owner is now cleaning it up and fixing it up for new renters. And uh, Anna, Amy wanted to move next door, but that's not going to work out. But so I said, oh, Lord, give me a new neighbor so they I can share Jesus with them. So I'm already praying for that empty house, right? So I can share Jesus with them. I want to share Christ with them. So I work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean that I'm going to work out my, that we fear God because we know he's righteous and holy? That we're not scared about like, oh, am I doing something right? Am I going to do it right? But when I seek him and want to do what's right in his eyes, then he's going to give us the purpose that we're here for. Is that what it says? It says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his purpose. What is God's purpose for you? 
right? For Tina, it's to be a good wife to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, yes. Right? And for me to be a good husband to her, right? But it's all. Yeah. <laughs> Man, come on, right? Be a good husband and be a caregiver, you know, all those things that men should be, right? For your wives and your loved ones, right? And, but, but then there's a greater purpose. What is God's purpose for us? If the two are one flesh, then we have a purpose, right? Right? What is our purpose? What does God have for us? I mean, He has something for you and me to do. Amen? Not only that we live a righteous and holy life, that our, that our light shines like He is. Now think about Jesus. His light shined in the world. Right? He became a human, humbled himself, and he walked, and everywhere he went, there was healings everywhere. I mean, healing was just like, it's like, it wasn't like we have to conjure up an event to have healing service. Healing just happened wherever he went. Right? The message wasn't the healing. The message wasn't the deliverance from the demons even. Right? The message was that he was the hope and salvation of the world. Right? So let's go pray, hand, lay hands on people, and, and let's, let's pray for the sick and help the homeless and do all those wonderful things. But don't forget, the message is Jesus loves you, and he died for you, and he, you have hope in him. Amen? Amen. That's what the message is. So I, I think of the church kind of, I think, I, I believe for our church this, that I want people to get healed when they come to church. I want, I'm going to get healed when you come to your house. I want, I want you to heal, you know, like, let God use you wherever you go. I want that to happen. But I, I want you to not only do those acts of kindness. Come on, Jesus was the beginning of the act of kindness. I mean, there's a crippled man, right? Jesus heals him. I mean, that's an act of kindness, right? He says, listen, it's not about that. It's about who I am. It's the life that I give. It's the, it's the life I'll give you, amen? And even the religious people try to trick Jesus with a crippled man, right? He came home trying to trick Jesus. Like healing on the Sabbath. I mean, he's like, okay, fine, no problem. I heal that. He says, you're luck. You lose a sheep in the in, in the field. You go find your sheep on the Sabbath, right? So this is a lost lost sheep, and he healed them. The religious people were all messed up about that because they had all these rules. We don't have no rules here, right? You go and heal people all over Madison, right? You go share Jesus with people all over. You're free to do that. Let me release you from that. Right? I remember I had to bring my buddies to church so a pastor could preach so they could be saved, right? So I had this altar call at the end of service. People would kneel down at the altar, right? And we they'd pray sinner's prayer. And, oh my goodness, they were, they were saved now. And the next day they're all drunk again, you know? It's like, what did it? I, but I had the power to do that. You have the power to do that every day, right? If you're a believer, how many believers I have here? Don't raise your hand. I believe, and if I believe, the power of the Holy Spirit is in us. And what's it beautiful? It don't matter what your age is. He's the youngest and oldest. We have the same power. Amen? Work out your salvation, which fear and trouble me, so you can fulfill the purpose God has for you. So sometimes, I remember that day I got saved. I mean, it was an amazing day in my life. I'll never forget that moment that God said, call me son. And I said, I was going to be a follower of Jesus that day. I will never forget that day. Amen. But my salvation is every day. If I just, what happened in, in church and in Christianity, we remember that day that we got saved, and it was for a hope of salvation that we have in the future. So I always remember the day we got saved, and it's like, we, uh, Jesus is going to come back, we're going to get raptured, and we're going to be with him forever and ever, and everything's going to be cool. I mean, we have work, and man, we're going to have fun. Big dinner, right? And we never teach on what happens in between. We have a power over sin now. Amen? We have power over the enemy now. We have power over demonic forces now, right? We have power in healing now, right? We, we can walk in that. I don't want you to just think about that. I love that day. Let me tell you. I tell this story over and over and over. And I, I'm excited about what's going to happen in the future, right? I, I just know that's going to be neat. We have final, the enemy will finally be defeated. He'll be cast in the lake of fire forever and ever. And there's going to be, in the Revelations, there's going to be a brand new heaven. It says the stars will melt. I don't know, that's going to probably look cool. I hope you see it, right? All the universe will just melt. God will make a new heaven, right? I don't know the stars will look, they look cool now. 
don't know what's going to look like later, but it's, you know, it's going to be God. I mean, God, you read in uh, Ezekiel where he's through the stars and is an afterthought almost in the heavens. It's, it's kind of neat. It kind of compounds. It gets, keeps scientists busy and trying to figure things out. I think it's kind of cool. There's a black hole. There's a hole here. There's this, uh, we found another place that could be like Earth. Whatever, you know, keep, keep doing, you know, God is God. You'll find him. Keep searching, right? You'll find God. Right? Because when you find God and you're a scientist like that, you go, wow, this all makes sense now. I can stop writing my thesis. I don't know what to write no more because it's like I have, to, I have to say God in my thesis and you can't do that. You have to get your doctorate. So anyway, to some colleges. And then he's going to make a new earth. Like, I don't know what the earth is going to be like new, but I think I have a clue. When I go back to Genesis and read how the Garden of Eden, right? And what it was like. I don't think we're going to be wearing fig leaves and stuff like that. I don't think we need to do that. I think we'll be dressed in his glory. Amen. We're not going to be angels floating around. But it's going to be new. It's going to be perfect. It's like the Father wanted in the beginning for all of us. Right? To walk with God in the cool of the day. Like, I mean, that's what, I mean, walk with God. Like, hey, God. I mean, I went through some rough times. I thank you for that, you know. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to say, though. I probably won't say nothing, right? What are you going to say to God? Thank you. Right? Thank you for saving me. Think about that this week. What would you say to God when you walked through the pool of night with him? Or the afternoon? Eating a banana or something? I don't know. Doing the garden. God, this is amazing. His salvation was awesome and wonderful. Let me share with you... Uh, Some more scripture here. I'm going to close up with this. First Peter. It says, young men, I guess we young ladies too, right? In the same way, be submissive to the elders. Oh. Maybe not. Oh, keep reading. And all of you clothe yourself in humility towards one another because God opposed the power and gives grace and help. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on him. Because he cares for you. Come on. The word of God is alive. Isn't it? Amen. So it says we have to humble ourselves to one another. Right? There's kind of a place of humility. God, you're God. Jesus, you're Lord. Holy Spirit, guide me in that. Right? Don't. We're not better than one another. Right? We're not better than the unsaved person. Right? Because God loves them equally. That's what's so beautiful. When I understood that in my spirit, like, I'm not better. I mean, I went to churches that we preach at everything. Everything was wrong. I've been to those churches. I was involved in those churches, right? Everything is wrong. And everybody out there was bad. But it's not true. Everybody out there, God loves. And I love them too, right? They take a different stance in my Christianity now. I don't look at myself as better than somebody else. I humble myself and say, I want to serve them so they'll know Jesus. It's a whole other, it's, it's not like the world has this um, sense of, how do I want to say this, volunteerism, right? Where to go help the community with all these acts of kindness. Those are nice things to do, don't get me wrong. I mean, but there's no life in that. It's just like, oh, look what I've done. But when we go help serve the community, then we lift up Jesus. No, it's not what we're doing. We give Jesus glory, amen? Now, we're doing this act. I remember, um, first of all, this is just a reminder story. Um, when I first became a believer, and I got out of the brig, I was out of the brig, uh, and I gave, gave my life to Jesus, I started following Jesus on Wednesday, on Friday I was out of the brig, after I was supposed to be in there for six months. So within a week, I was out of the brig. It was, it was a miracle. Because uh, I was supposed to be dishonorably discharged, I retired from the Marine Corps, so it was amazing. It was just, uh, I can tell you a story, but I remember one of the first um, 
couple months or so, started going into a church, you know, and getting fed and learning about God and, you know, things that we didn't know. Well, T and I, in the beginning, we just read our Bible. We, we just, been, we, every day, we, read, we didn't have TV set back, we just read our Bible every day. We didn't argue over the word, what it meant, you know, trying to figure it out. But we just would read and read and finally got, um, uh, got involved with a, a church, local church. But anyway, in between that time, I would get up on Saturday morning early and I'd go to uh, the beach and I would just read my Bible and pray at the beach. I love going to the beach and I just read for an hour or two. It was just wonderful. Me and God, the seagulls, the beach, the waves hitting the beach. Wonderful. It was like heaven. It was just amazing. God's presence was there. I'd get in my car and drive and every once in a while the Holy Spirit would tell me to do something. And I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. I used to have like a, I mean, I was learned about God's this, things of God, right? I just knew. I just didn't know that it was the Holy Spirit, but now I know. But I just was impressed to go help some people, right? So I'd have like, we didn't have a lot of money back then. Matter of fact, we had no pay for a few months then. And because, they, anyway, it was just, it was, I don't know how we survived. God, God did it to us. But anyway, so I'd have a few dollars in my pocket, maybe we'll get a soda or something on the way home. And the Lord would tell me, give it to somebody, right? I remember this couple, they were picking up, uh, Aluminum cans on the beach, right? With this little girl. And I remember, I, I see her face right now. I could never, I don't even know her name, but it was there. But the Holy Spirit said, Go give, well, God to me at that point, go give that money I had in my pocket to them, right? And I pulled my car over, and it was on the beach road, so you can't, there's not a lot of places to pull your car over, but it was in that spot, there was a place I could pull my car over right there. It was like a grassy place. Otherwise, it would have been sand, it was sinking the six, seven inches of sand. Anyway, I pulled right over right, right, right quick when I saw that. I got out of the car and I went over and I said to them, I said, God wants me to give this to you. And I gave them this, you know, I don't, it wasn't very much money. Yeah, I gave it to them. And this little girl was like, like a little angel, right? She goes, oh, thank you. You know, like, I mean, they were desperate. I don't know their story. I just know that I was being obedient to God, you know? And it was so memorable time. Now I would probably pray for them, let them to Jesus and all this other stuff. But back then I was just trying to be, I was just, God was just teaching me, right? He's just showing me that I need to listen to his voice and hear his voice, and he's gonna, he's gonna, um, um, uh, I guess I just, I just like instead of pride saying no, I'm not gonna do that, I just did it, right? Instead of I just humbled myself, said, I, and I didn't know that, I didn't know it was humbling, I didn't know what that meant. I was just heard the voice of God and I reacted to it, amen. How am I myself to serve that person? And all of a sudden, you know, who knows? I don't know if they ever will come. I just told God. Gave, gave them, but it's just little things like that God uses us because our life is not our own life. We're only in this world for just a short time, correct? And everything we do should honor God. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, so I have another scripture, 1 Corinthians 1.27. Uh, so God uses the humble, and in 1 Corinthians, Paul writes about the, the weak, the weak things of God he uses. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 27. Uh, or we can go back up a little bit here. Now verse 25 says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Is amen? Amen. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many of you were influential, not many were of no worth, but God shows the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God shows the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So, why do I share that? Because it doesn't matter, sometimes we don't think of, we think of ourselves, you know, maybe I'm not good enough or I'm not qualified. Maybe I'm just, just not, a, you know, I don't, I don't have, God uses everybody. Amen? doesn't matter if you come from noble birth or not, or whatever your status in the world is. If you have your doctorate or your master's degree or if you're in high school, it doesn't matter. God uses everybody. Amen? He wants to use us. But we just have to humble ourselves and God use me. And he will use you. I used to think of that I wasn't ever going to, I was never a good speaker, so I don't know how God could call me to preach it. And he reminded me of this. So this is not my strength. My strength is out there talking to people on the street, praying for God. I love doing that. That's my strength. This is not my strength. God says, this is what I want you to do. I said, yes, so God uses you. Amen. So God uses everybody. Amen. He uses each and every one of us. Last one, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.
24-7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-suppressing power of God, surpassing power of God, not and not from us, and is not from us. Let me read that again. But we have the, this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all suppress, suppress, surpassing power is from God, not from us. So are we a uh, vessel of clay? We're really nothing without God, right? But you have the power of God to overcome every sin, everything in this world. Amen? And let's go to verse uh, chapter 12. Just one more verse and we're going to close. It says 12. 9 through 10. So I, I, I read this on my computer all week long and I read out my Bible today, so I should bring my computer up. It would be easier for me. But uh, verse uh, chapter 12, 9 and 10. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more and gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest in me. This, this whole verse is 10. This is why, for Christ's sake, I be the light and weakness in um, insult and in hardship and persecution and different uh, difficulty. For when I am weak, I am strong. How many can say that? Wow. You don't, you don't hear that in the church say, like, let me be weak, God, so you can be glorified, right? We're going to say, no, we want the power of God, right? We want all the strength, we want everything, and, and God is just saying to us today, I think, for our church, because I think we're, we're in a really cool place right now, and there's, there's a lot of great things happening, we don't see them right here, but there's a lot of things happening right now that's just powerful, right? And I'm saying, God, just humble us, let us, let you be glorified in our midst, amen, in our lives, so that you, your son, right? Who do we want to reflect today in our lives? Jesus, only Jesus. Can Jesus be glorified in your life, in your heart, in your mind? Amen? Can Jesus be glorified in us? Say, well, God, you know my weaknesses. You know what I struggle with. He goes, yes, I know them. And I gave you power over them. Amen? So work out your salvation with fear and trust. Know that, know that we're all gonna, we're all struggling here today about different things in our lives, right? And it's okay. But let's not just... Let's not rest there, not sleep there, okay? Let's, let's, we have victory over that because of Jesus. And then we take that power with us as we go and we help ourselves to the world. We say, listen, we're no different than you are. We, 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 we work it out our salvation too, but the salvation is for you and me. Amen? Amen. I want Tina's going to come, and I want to just give, um, give you an opportunity to, um, to just reflect on that for a moment. Where are you? I had a salvation experience, right? Probably all of us here today did. Remember the day I said, and maybe if you didn't, if you don't, if you never did, then that's okay, then this maybe this is your day too. But we all have then we then then we have this life that we're living in Christ now. Or trying to live in Christ Jesus. Amen. And in that we can have, I, I mean you can be humble and be joyful, right? You can have be humble and be confident in God. It's by faith we have the salvation to work it out with fear, with fear and trembling. It's by faith that we say, yes, God, I believe. Even though in the natural I see these things that might not be perfect in my life, but in the spiritual realm, I believe that you're helping me overcome those things. Amen? By his power and by his grace. Thank God for grace. Even though you make mistakes, God still loves us. He's not going to, you know, I mean, he, he corrects us when, we're, when we do things wrong. I believe God does that because he loves us. That's what the word of God says. But we walk in this present time. This is what we don't get in the church very often. We walk in this present time right now, working out our salvation because we have the power over sin. We have the power, not just for salvation initially, but we have power to work out our salvation right now through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Just bow your heads for a second. Examine yourself. Take a moment. Just examine yourself. I have the power over sin right now. I don't have to yield to temptation. I know who my salvation is. I know it's Jesus. I know I'm not Jesus. I know my spouse is not Jesus. I know my friends are not Jesus. I know Jesus is Jesus. And I'm going to come to him this morning and say, Father, help me. Help me right now to work out. 
my current salvation, the salvation I'm walking in right now. I have power over everything because of Jesus and faith in Jesus. Oh, help us, Lord Jesus, this morning to believe that. Help our unbelief, Lord, that we have power over sin, hell, death, and the grave. We have power over temptation. We have power over sin. We have power over our, our broken bodies. We have power over the enemy. <coughs> Hallelujah. We thank you for that. So I pray this over you this morning. Father, I pray restore to us the joy of our salvation. Hallelujah. Restore unto us the happiness in knowing who we are in Christ Jesus, that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Jesus. And we give you glory for that. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious and holy name. Father, I pray your blessings over each family, each person that's here today, Lord. I pray your peace that surpasses all understanding fill our hearts and minds this morning. In your Son's name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give God praise this morning. Father, I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You may be dismissed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Or if you want to come for prayer, I can come. We'll pray for you.